Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Oyster Bay East Norwich Central School District Board meeting. If we could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Check on uh, Miss Santos. Do we have any correspondence? All correspondence was via email on 4 3 Grace Surrey proposed budget. Um, 4 4 James um, Scheidt re regarding uh, Ms. Bird. Uh, 4 5 Kristen uh, Bradley regarding Bateman Touchdown Club. Uh, 4 6 Alina Yuzov regarding support of the BOCES Board of Trustee election. Um, 410, Georgia Zabo Geyer, um, Geyer, I'm sorry, um, second attempt on resolved issue. Um, 410, Kristen Smookler regarding Varsity Cheer Nationals 2425. 411, Grace Survey Policy for Board of Education members to reply to correspondence. Uh, 411, uh, Janice Bone regarding vendor contracts. 411, regarding uh, Kristen um, Curly's re, um, Vernon Sixth Grade Ancient Civilization Project open to parents. And the next three are regarding the same subject matter. We, uh, that was 411 from um, Dina Finley, um, Stephanie Petrello, and on 415, Jeff and Angela Fox regarding um, Connor Bird employment at Oven Schools. Thank you, Ms. Santos. Now I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Gianni for a superintendent's report. Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you, Ms. Castro Giovanni. I hope everybody had a wonderful spring, uh, relaxing break. It was not spring yet, but uh, close. Uh, students are doing very well. Sports are in full, full force, so uh, it's nice to see the students outside enjoying uh, the good weather. I am very proud of all the work that has been um, that has been going on in the schools. Um, the last few weeks, we had a couple of induction ceremonies, and it was wonderful to see the students getting inducted in the National Junior Honor Society, the National Honor Society, uh, Humanities, World Languages, and and the best part of all was the fact that. Uh, and all those uh, inductions, a few minutes before the students were on the field playing. Uh, and then two minutes later, they were all dressed up on the, on the stand uh, over here, uh, getting recognized. So uh, congratulations to all of them, and uh, keep up the great work. The Vernon uh, Got Talent show was amazing. We had uh, 80 students on, on uh, over 40 acts, and uh, I was over here, and... Uh, I want to say a big thank you to the PTA for organizing this year after year and all the students for the wonderful work. There was dancing, magic, uh, um, singing. There was a lot going on. The auditorium was packed and everybody had a great time. So uh, keep up the good work. And there's uh, definitely a lot of talent over here in Oyster Bay. So I was proud to see that. Um, the Oyster Bay East Norwich School District has been nationally recognized by, uh, with the best communities for music education. That's a national award, a national title. Um, I think Ms. Erica Giopak did a lot of work behind the scene submitting all the paperwork. I know that uh, the recognition, uh, the, the organization is NAMM, N-A-M-M -M Foundation, is that right? And um, they, uh, they look at different things, and they look at the graduation requirement, uh, the music class participation, uh, the instructional time, the facility. So obviously very proud of the students, the staff, um, and obviously all the work that has been done over the years on the, on the music program so keep up the good work and uh, a national title is something that we should be very proud all of us thank you <laughs> international um, international club and world language Yana society hosted the international night on Wednesday 
March 27th. So we had students from Roosevelt, students from Vernon, uh, sampling the food that was prepared by some of the students at the, at the high school. It was in, in the lobby at the high school. And it was wonderful to see all the students and coming together and appreciating the different uh, culture. I, I saw there was some Italian food that was good too. So um, congratulations for all the people organizing this event and um, putting it all together. It was, it was a nice to, to have all the students here from almost kindergarten all the way to, to the high school. So congratulations. I know that Ms. Raynor is going to give a little bit of a construction update that has been going on over the past few months, but I want to say that I'm very proud of the fact that we have maintained an uninterrupted um, school going on um, with the construction. Uh, the work is moving along. I hope you had a chance to go through it, you know, visit, obviously, the high school. You see all the work is pretty much completed. But at Vernon and at Roosevelt, uh, the work is uh, amazing and how fast the buildings are going up. And we have maintained um, you know, the entire structure throughout the school year. We didn't miss a beat. Student didn't miss anything. And I'm very, very proud of them because they're able to work around, have a good time. I know that uh, Vernon playground was a big hit. And, uh, but they worked around. They worked throughout you know, the day and uh, even with the construction going on, they didn't miss a beat. So uh, we remain confident that the work will be completely done by um, at least at the two schools, the Music Extension and Roosevelt uh, by the middle of July. So September 1st, 2024, the students will be able to use the new space. And the other day I was visiting with uh, Mr. Nelson in one of the third grade class and I showed the students, uh, they were doing a, a lesson on measuring. Uh, and I showed the class some of the rendering and, and the work that is going to be done. And they were super excited. It was nice to see that their excitement. Um, again, we are, we are on time and under budget. And I think we should be very proud of all the work. And I know that Ms. Raynor and the entire team, uh, they've done a lot of work. So um, please visit as soon as we able to open the doors it would be uh, would be exciting and on may 10th we're going to have a grand opening for all the construction that has been going on over here the innovation lab the broadcasting studio so please come so you could see all the the new areas that we have created for our students um tonight we have um the board uh we are recommending the uh adoption the board uh the budget adoption for the 24 25 school year i want to commend the board on all the work that they have done reviewing the budget line by line and reviewing everything uh this has been um in all my years of working as a superintendent this has been one of the most difficult budget uh time uh, because we have seen an increase in in cost and a decrease in revenue. And um, the board has been working diligently to make sure that the students uh, will receive all the programs that they've been receiving and all the initiatives are continuing to, to go on. So a big thank you to the entire Board of Education. Um, I know that Ms. Raynor will present the budget, but you know we want you to know that we remained laser focused on on maintaining all the wonderful programs that we have for, for our students. And that's something that we take a lot of pride in that. Um, before I um, bring to the podium Ms. Erika Giopak, I would like to invite to the podium, to the podium uh, Dominic Carleo. Carleo? Dominic is here, I think. Yes, no? Maybe he's running late, maybe at a game. Uh, but uh, let me let me read. Um, Dominic was named as Newsday Top 100 Baseball Player for the second year in a row. Uh, Dominic was All County as a sophomore and All Conference as a junior. Um, he's off to a great start with a 4-0 pitching record, only allowing five hits so far this season. I have to read this because I don't know anything about baseball, so I hope I'm doing well, uh, Mr. Bramov. He has already uh, recorded 45 strikes out uh, this season. Uh, so Dominic is pitching like a, like a leader. 
Um, he also received a um, uh, nomination, uh, a citation from legislator Gitz. Uh, so we're very proud of him. Uh, we'll make sure that we'll get it to him tomorrow in the in the lobby when we see him. Uh, I think he has a game tonight. So congratulations to Dominic. So we have a couple of presentations tonight. So at this point, I'd like to bring to the podium, invite to the podium, Ms. Erica G. Yopak for the art and music recognition. Thank you, Dr. Iani. Good evening, everyone. So tonight, we come together to celebrate all the remarkable achievements of our students in the arts, in particular visual art. We will also have a little encore uh, of um, our musicians at the end as well for this. Um, but this is a night to recognize their creativity, their dedication, and the talent they, that has brought so much vibrancy to this district and our school community. And as educators, we could not be any prouder of the growth and accomplishments of our student artists. Um, so let's get started here. All right, so these are the awards we're gonna go through. And you will notice as I go through each, I've also included a picture of their work, which you can also appreciate as a visual. So this very first one um, is called Go Ape. It's the advanced placement um, exhibit, which is held at the Art League of Long Island. And there was 38 high schools that participated with a total of 103 students represented from all over Long Island, both counties. And there was very difficult decision making to go into who took the titles at this competition. But I am so proud to announce that we had three students who placed in this exhibit and one who was an award winner. Drum roll, please. Ava DeAngelis was our award winner, so if she can come on up. Nancy Abodi also was uh, placed in this exhibit. And Nicoletta Sicalis. No, Nancy's not here. So the next one we're going to look at is the Nassau County um, exhibit. This is for students grades K through 12. So this is all of Nassau County and a very limited number of students are placed in this exhibit. So um, I would like to congratulate Omar Figueroa, William Amamaya and Ava DeAngelis once again. So Ava took second in the entire show of the entire county. There was over 300 submissions um, of, of high schoolers and Ava took second place. So we're so proud of all of our students in that competition. So the next one is the Art Supervisors Association. They hold an all county art exhibit. This is the 19th annual one. And this is um, going to be a lot of our younger artists uh, all the way through high school. So I would like to, that's us at all county at the art exhibit. And here is their work. So starting off with our very youngest, Mr. Anthony Soto. Come on up, Anthony. Then we have Mr. Theodore Perry in second grade. That's his piece right in the middle. And Holly Warner in second grade. Yeah, Theodore's right here. And that's Holly. So that's their work in order, if you can look at the screen there. So that's amazing. That's for the entire county. Moving up in the grades, we have Dylan Blind in sixth grade. So I'm going to advance the work here. Uh, so Dylan, come on up. <laughs> Olivia Montagari and Patrick Cleary, all in sixth grade. So moving into um, our middle and high school students that placed in all county, Vienna Pestine in grade eight, Alejandra Velasquez Palacios, and Sabrina Eisner.
And our next group of students who placed in the all-county art exhibit are Perla Martinez in grade nine, Katerina Dinda in grade 10, and Nicoletta Sakelis in grade 11. And our very last all-county group, Ella Lingen in grade 12, Mauricio Reyes Canales, and once again, Ava DeAngelis, who was the senior scholarship recipient of the county. So the next one we're gonna talk about is the LIU Post Advanced Visions. Um, they hold this every year, and this year 39 public and private schools throughout Nassau and Suffolk submitted student artwork for display, and 40 student artists from high school throughout Nassau and Suffolk um, who are enrolled in AP art classes. So we are so proud that both Ava and Nicoletta, who are already on stage, were awarded this opportunity, and there's their work. Next up is the Long Island's Best Young Artist held at Heckscher every year. There was almost 500 pieces of student work submitted, and our senior, Nancy, who's not with us today, her artwork was among 87 selected for this exhibit, and we are so proud of Nancy for her piece. So since 1923, the Scholastic Art and Writing Award has recognized some of America's most celebrated artists while they were teenagers, including Andy Warhol, Stephen King, and Amanda Gorman, just to name a few. Our very own Omar Figueroa's work was reviewed and recognized by a panel of creative professionals and awarded an outstanding merit in originality, skill, and the emergence of personal voice and vision. And now he can be counted among the esteemed Scholastic Award recipients in the arts. In the fall, Ms. Crowley's students took place, uh, took part, I should say, in the New York State Senator Jack Martin's Thanksgiving Creativity Celebration, and the students submitted their work uh, about things that they were grateful for, and then they had to depict that in a visual, artistic way. So our fifth grade students that made their work into this exhibit were Amelia Pierce, Emma Jorgensen, come on up. Luciana Bulger, come on up, yep. Yep, Luciana. Emily Morea. And Riley Tagliamonte, those are our fifth graders. For our sixth graders, we have Olivia Montegari. Tate Bear. Claire Windhausen. Bryn Tagliamonte. Kiara Altamirano. Mia Brianza and Juliana Viegas. So just a little visual reminder of our upcoming art events. Yes, take out those phones and take a picture right now. Very smart. We have our T we just had our TR art gallery last night, which was amazing. We have Miss Brustman here with us tonight. We have our Vernon Art Gallery coming up on May 8th 
along with our very first Junior Honor Society in Art. On May 10th, we have the TR Family Paint Party, which you can register for. And on May 21st, we have our Oyster Bay High School Art Show. And Ms. Miley, one of our teachers, is with us tonight as well. I just want to thank all of our incredible art teachers, K-12 in the district, Ms. Brussman, who's here, Ms. Crowley, Mr. Boris, Ms. Miley, who's here, and Ms. Randazzo. And this is going to be a little, um, we'll do a little picture here of our art folks, and then we'll do our all-county musicians after that. So as Dr. Iani shared, we were just awarded uh, Best Communities for Music Education, which is a national award. We are so proud to hold this title. And trust me, these students and teachers every day prove to us how amazing of a district we are for music education. I just want to take this time to honor our students who were placed in all county music this year. These are their lovely pictures right up here. So I'll start by age, starting with our Division I uh, student musicians. Lucia Cochran, if you're here, come on up. <laughs> Lucille Ken Kelly. Maisie Fox. Emily Morea. Amazing. Helen Mitchell, Charlene Beale, Claire Monahan, Iva Jovanic. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Hannah Gorney. Eva and Anna. Oh, sorry, Eva. Eva. Uh, Chiara Altamirano. <laughs> Ava Sokovic. <laughs> Cecilia Panero. Liam Brin, <laughs> Abigail Rudnett, Lila Cavanaugh, Madeline Matthews, Hannah Rudnett. Emma Kim, Malika Mehta, Mosey Bradley, Joseph LaRosa, Michael Lewis, Tyler Camback, and Francesca Alejo. And Mr. Castidis, uh, we have one of our music teachers here tonight. Come join us for the picture.
So at this point, I'd like to invite to the podium uh, Ms. Tammy McAlwee for the Humanities presentation. The students, if you have homework to do, this would be a good time to go. Go home and do homework. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Nothing against Ms. McAlwee, right. but the homework is more important. I won't take that personally. All right, good evening. Thank you to the Board of Education, Dr. Yanni and Ms. Raynar for this opportunity to share updates about the amazing work of our teachers and students and what they're doing under the Humanities Department. Tonight's presentation will be structured in three parts, elementary highlights, middle school, high school highlights, and high school honor society inductions. We're going to start with elementary highlights, specifically at Roosevelt. So we have Reader's Theater, a dramatic presentation of a written work which continues to serve as a strong way for some of our youngest readers to practice fluency, comprehension, and performance skills. This is a true collaborative experience where Ms. Davidson, Ms. Sambelli, Ms. Brussman, Ms. Murphy, and all of our second grade teachers help to make this happen for each second grade class integrating literacy, art, and music. Balloons Over Roosevelt is a very special event inspired by the book Balloons Over Broadway, the true story of the puppeteer of Macy's Parade. It has now become an annual event focused on bringing together literacy and STEM where second graders design balloons to match their nonfiction animal studies, and it is yet another example of interdisciplinary instruction and collaboration in our schools. This year, Theodore Roosevelt held its third annual first grade social studies night, where first graders rotated through five different stations focused on local history, as well as instilling the importance of being active and engaged citizens. Our students also raised over $200 for charity Teddies for Kids, sponsored by the Theodore Roosevelt Association, that raises money to purchase teddy bears for hospitalized children nationwide. Now we're going to shift to Vernon highlights. Our long-standing tradition of the third grade wax museum continues. In preparation for this event, students learned about a famous figure such as Jane Goodall or Albert Einstein, and then they had the opportunity to present a speech for guests from their perspective of their chosen figure. Guests enjoyed pressing buttons to bring the wax figures alive. Fourth graders led a special event for families about the American Revolution at a celebration where guests had the opportunity to visit the fourth grade classrooms and view student-led presentations and participate in games that our own students design. It's a true example of our students demonstrating leadership skills. Raymond Hall, home of America's first documented Valentine, if you didn't know that, honored select poets from Vernon who entered their annual Valentine Day poetry contest. Students in grades four, five, and six had an opportunity to read aloud their poems at an award ceremony held on February 12th. The Humanities Department this year was awarded a grant from the Long Island Language Arts Council, LILAC, to support district-wide book clubs aimed at fostering a deeper connection between the love of reading and local history. Following a month-long exploration and discussion centered around the book To Dare Mighty Things, The Life of Theodore Roosevelt, our fifth graders welcomed our town historian, John Hammond, as a culminating event. Mr. Hammond shared a wealth of knowledge with our fifth graders about, around Roosevelt and our rich local history, really connecting our students to their roots and helping them to really understand Oyster Bay's significance in our global history. Now I'm shifting to middle high school highlights. 
um, with a focus on English. So as one way to support a district-wide goal focusing on academic vocabulary, at the middle school, high school, we have started a word of the week. Each week we choose one academic word and all of our teachers post the word of the week in their classrooms and we encourage students and teachers to use it in creative ways. Outside of the library, there's a bulletin board highlighting many aspects of the word of the week, including texts and state exams where students might actually encounter this word. We've also created a giant word wall on the third floor where all of these words are on display. This week's, week's word of the week is optimal. So if you haven't used it yet, there's still time. Miss Galeotto's creative writing class visited Theodore Roosevelt Elementary School on December 12th to share their original children's books. We love connecting our students across buildings. To continue with a focus on English, students in Dr. Fahey's College English incorporate the principles of media literacy through film analysis. This course is aligned with the Intro to Film course that is offered through Stony Brook's English department, as our students actually have the, the opportunity to receive course credit through Stony Brook. Dr. Fahey has developed this course to move beyond writing analytical essays. Her students created their own silent films around the building, and some teachers actually appeared in these films. The students then held a silent film festival and award ceremony that they created. One student, Matt Zakarian, created Student Choice Awards with our 3D printer, and he named them Oysters. This was an example of true collaboration and our 20 cent, 21st century skills at their best. AP Lit students in Miss Brady's class and Wind Ensemble students in Mr. Sissia's class collaborated across three days to connect poetry and music. In our collab, the AP Lit students taught Wind Ensemble students Edith Nesbitt's poem, Age to Youth, lifting their own literary analysis. Classes then joined together in the band room where Wind Ensemble students interpreted the poem through music, performing that for the AP Lit students. And lastly, both groups came together one final time for a Socratic seminar where they critiqued and debated the process. This learning experience fostered a deep understanding of literary elements and allowed our students to see curricular connections between music and poetry. I'm now going to shift to focus on social studies. In Ms. Harnick's AP Gov course, students learn key concepts and institutions of the political system, the U.S. Constitution, and civics participation within the U.S. To make this learning relevant, we try to connect our students with local politicians to understand the connections between local and federal government. This fall, Assembly Member Jake Blumenkrantz spoke to our AP Gov and Economics class about the legislative process. Students were highly engaged and displayed a sophisticated level of knowledge as well as curiosity with many relevant and thoughtful questions. Our Model UN is an extracurricular activity under the leadership of Mr. Pontillo at the Oyster Bay High School that meets once per month. The co-secretary generals, Rose Lindstrom and Michael Oliveira, generate the topics and moderate the discussion among their fellow students who act as delegates from, from various nations around the world, considering what UN can do to solve world issues and how these world issues impact our world. This club allows our students to develop their knowledge around global issues, shape their critical thinking, public, think, uh, public speaking, and debate skills. As part of the district-wide book, book clubs that I touched on earlier, our eighth graders had the opportunity to participate in a book club focused on the book Teddy by Lawrence Luckinville, led by Mr. Weber. On Mar March 8th, Mr. Weber, Mr. Soper, and myself helped to lead a book club discussion on the text Theodore Roosevelt's Relevance in Oyster Bay. It was inspiring to see so many of our students having mature discussions and sharing their own perspectives and analyzing major events in Roosevelt's lives. So now I'm going to shift focus with social studies to the seal of civic readiness. Last year we piloted the seal of civic readiness, which is a formal recognition that a student has attained a high level of proficiency in terms of their civic knowledge, skills, mindset, and participation. This is a true distinction on a high school diploma and transcript and demonstrates to universities, colleges, and future employees that the student recognizes the value of civic engagement and responsibility. This year, the um, seal of civic readiness is open to all seniors. 
As we build our experiences for our middle school students to work towards this seal, Mr. Hoja has worked with his students in the humanities research classes to implement Project Soapbox sponsored by Mikva. Project Soapbox is a public speaking program that calls young people to speak out on issues that affect them and their communities. These powerful speeches can have lasting transformative impacts on their classrooms, schools, and communities. Our students have created speeches from topics such as why, should college, why college athletes should get paid or climate change or AI in society. And lastly, related to the seal of civic readiness, Passport for Good is a web-based platform that supports the seamless tracking of data for our students related to their civic participation, extracurricular activities, and clubs. We began piloting this program this year in our humanities class so students can begin to track their experiences such as Project Soapbox that I mentioned, and those can eventually count towards the seal. We're also using it with our stu media students in our broadcasting classes to track their work-based learning experiences on and off campus. Shifting to business in humanities. So the Oyster Bay Business Honor Society is part of the New York State Business Honor Society, which is run by the Business Teachers Association of New York State. One of the benefits of this affiliation is that our students have an opportunity to network and participate in events with other high achieving business students across the state. Thus far, the OBN Business Honor Society students under the leadership of our business teacher, Ms. Kowalski, have been involved in the planning and execution of International Night and collecting leftover solar eclipse glasses to send to Latin America for the August 2024 solar eclipse. In the future, they plan to host events such as an OBEN Small Business Owners Lunch and Learn, Entrepreneur Discussion Panels, and Community Give Back Programs. Our induction ceremony is on April 30th, and we're looking forward to officially welcoming all of our new members. Our students in virtual enterprise attended the LIU conference where they presented their innovative projects products alongside other student entrepreneurs from all across Long Island. They also attended the Youth Business Summit at the Javits Center this past Friday where they participated in workshops on leadership and business skills and attended a trade show where they were exposed to firms from all over the world. Ellen Palazzo, our Long Island Regional Director for for VE and Elizabeth Parin, the Associate Director of Programs, visited both of our VE classes this year and, and inspired our students to further develop their business skills and talents preparing our students for the future. VE students also had the opportunity to practice their product presentations for the LIU conference and receive feedback from Vicki Walsh, town councilwoman, Richard Lamarca, town clerk, and Matthew McCartan, an entrepreneur VP of Upfront Security Associates. This year, our VE students worked with our broadcasting students to create commercials for their products for the National Video Commercial Competition. Our students' innovative Solar Seats product commercial received honorable mention. Lastly, our VE students are also participating in Junior Achievement this year for the first time, an international organization that promotes financial literacy with a specially designed curriculum for all ages from K to senior citizens. Casey Collins, the Long Island Program Manager, will spend a day with our VE students training them on how to teach elementary students about basic financial literacy. And our VE students will actually turn the key this to some of our kindergarten and first graders at Theodore Roosevelt in, um, in May. Now shifting to facts, family and career and, and consumer science. In a true collaboration, Ms. Boshin's Global and Gourmet students learn the behind the scenes of our local eatery, Gimme Burger, alongside Mr. Dollins, production students who were conducting a field report on this local restaurant. And during an entrepreneurship unit, FAC students paired up with our business department and presented different product plans to business students. The winning company was Churro Bites, and all of their funds went to Make-A-Wish Foundation. 
Lastly, a highlight on our induction ceremonies to, to follow up with what Dr. Yanni was sharing before. On Wednesday, March 27th, the Humanities Department held an induction ceremony to induct students into Quill and Scroll and Rho Kappa. 24 students were inducted into Rho Kappa, led by their advisor, Mr. Pontillo, and four students into Quill and Scroll, led by their advisor, Dr. Fahey. The ceremony included a traditional candle lighting and member pledge as students took an oath to uphold the pillars of their societies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. McElway. That was, that was really informative. Thank Very you. thorough. Do any of trustees have any questions? Thank you so much for the update. Thank you. Ms. Danka for the world language presentation. Thank you. Good evening, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Yanni, Central District Buildings Administrators, and all members of Oyster Bay East Norwich Central School District. Thank you for your support and for giving me the opportunity to serve this wonderful community and to present for you some of this year's highlights from the English as a New Language and World Languages Department which were achieved by our adherence to the Board of Education goals set for the current school year. I will talk about English language learners, world languages on elementary level, and world languages on secondary level. Currently, there are 118 English language learners, or ELSE, 17 on which are students with interrupted or inconsistent formal education as well as 44 former English language learners who exited the status within the past two years. Beginning this school year, we have clearly established process in place for new registrants that identifies our English language learners in accordance with the New York State Commissioner of Education's Regulation Part 154. Data collected during the intake process informs course programming, student placement, curriculum and instruction, student support system, and professional development for faculty and staff in order to empower every single student to achieve excellence. English as a New Language, or ENL, is a default program for English language learners in our district. In accordance with the state mandates, the ENL program consists of a standalone course in which an ENL teacher works with a small group of students of the similar English proficiency level on language development. The integrated core content area courses provide instruction of content area concepts through the scaffolded supports by building cognitive and metacognitive skills and strategies necessary for the mastery of concept. Such courses in most instances are caught taught by a teaching team of content area teacher and an ENL teacher. We are so lucky to have many bilingual Spanish teachers and staff who are able to use students' home languages in order to support and improve student achievement, which is one of our district's goals. I will shift now to world languages on elementary level. When it comes to world languages programs in our school district, the current school year is the historical first in many ways. For the first time ever, the world language in elementary school, or less, was introduced at Vernon School. The fundamental goal of this program is to create opportunities for all students to become active participant in communication, expression, and the negotiation of meaning in Mandarin Chinese every day. So fifth grade students learn it every single day. 
Another historical first for our school district is the introduction of the World Language Exploratory Program, or WLEX, to all students in grade six at Vernon. This exploratory program aims to introduce students to learning different languages, to build awareness and appreciation of other cultures, develop an appreciation for the value of learning another language, and increase motivation for future language study. Students experience a trimester of each, French, Spanish, and Mandarin Chinese. Then, based on their experience, ease of learning, and interest, they choose one language which continue to throughout their academic career. Our world language learners in Vernon have been having so much fun this year. They celebrated the Lunar Year of the Dragon by participating in the interactive workshop where they learned about the variety of cultures and languages within China through song, dance, costumes, and martial arts. I will never forget the moment during presentation to sixth grade by middle school world language teachers about their courses when all students spontaneously started singing in Mandarin Chinese like a well-rehearsed choir. Talking about learning languages through music and rhythm, it is my distinct pleasure to announce another first in our school district. A group of Chinese black sixth grade students who after only two weeks of instruction prepared and submitted a video entry of a song in Chinese to the Chinese Language Association of Secondary and Elementary Schools Talent Contest. And they won all the places they'll go. But the first stop is going to be Oyster Bay Middle School and High School, where there is an abundant world language program. In ninth grade, uh, we introduce American Sign Language uh, which uh, is currently from uh, 9th ninth, ninth and 11th grade. French and Spanish is from grades 7 to 12. In grades 11 and 12, we offer college Spanish 1 and 2, as well as AP Spanish language and culture. Spanish for heritage speakers is uh, offered for grades 7 through 10. Home language arts uh, is HLA class for newcomers, English language learners. And of course, Chinese Mandarin, which is currently grades seven through nine. Beginning in spring 2022 and throughout the 22-23 school year, our War Languages Department was joined by members of the Tri-State Consortium who learned about our district's vision and reviewed practices guided by three essential questions in relation to the alignment to the new World Languages standards curriculum, instruction, and assessment. This year, we continue to use their feedback to guide our planning, programming, expansion, instructional practices, and new initiatives. March was a busy month for world language learners. During the World Languages Honor Society induction ceremony held on March 27th, 26 students of American Sign Language, French, and Spanish were inducted. 103 middle school and high school learners of Spanish and 36 of French participated in the National World Languages competitions, which were held March 19th to 21st. The results will be announced in May, so keep your fingers crossed. One of the district I don't know what happened, hold on a second. There we go. One of the district's goals this year was to continue to promote a positive school climate and culture to create environments that enhance teaching and learning. The International Night on March 27th, organized by the War Languages Honor Society and International Club, in collaboration with PTAs and IDEA Committee, was a hit. Students, families, faculty, and staff not only contributed and served delicious samplers of foods from their heritage countries, but they also shared the recipes, all of which were published in the 2024 International Night Recipe Book. 
Thank you, Blast and Flex teachers and students for creating amazing presentations about other cultures, which were on the interactive board display throughout the evening. Thank you to all Roosevelt and Vernon teachers and students for creating colorful flag, flag projects and writing about their heritage countries. They were displayed at the high school lobby during the event and they were everything. There were activities galore. There were activities galore also during the War Languages Week. Middle school and high school heritage Spanish students decorated their classroom door for the color wars with traditional Otomi art from Mexico and learned about different Hispanic words that have come from indigenous Mexican languages. Some students compiled their favorite words in Spanish and learned about words borrowed from other cultures. Others watched videos about how languages shape our way of thinking and a bilingual brain. Then they conducted a research and created an informative poster with interesting facts about the advantage of, advantages of speaking another language. You can still see those posters in hallways of the high school building. Of course, the lip sync competition and March Madness in other languages had to take place. And finally, the New York State Seal of Biliteracy candidates were taking computer-based proficiency tests which brings me to our next historical first. The New York State Seal of Biliteracy, an initiative that supports another one of this year's district goals to prioritize experiences that enrich and expand students' academic careers beyond the classroom setting. This school year, our school district has received our first year school district and first year school badges by the New York State Office of Bilingual Education and World Languages. This prestigious New York State initiative recognizes the high proficiency in two or more languages beside English and the importance of biliteracy. Requ requirements for this distinguished achievement available to seniors is based on a point score system. We currently have approximately 30 students pursuing the seal of biliteracy. Considering only 0.4% of students nationwide receive seals of multiliteracy, I am so excited to say that several of our own seniors are pursuing this possibility. The Seal of Biliteracy culminating projects will take place within next few weeks, and I cannot wait to announce yet another historical first for the Oyster Bay East Norwich Central School District. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your fourth slide. Can you just tell me the um, SIFE, S I F A? In ninth and tenth grade, the numbers seem pretty high. Nine and ten. Yes. People are they are those students all new this year? Are they new here to Oyster Bay this year or to this country this year? Correct. Well, vast majority are. Students are usually students with interrupted education until they uh, get to English language proficiency level transitioning. So vast majority of uh, students with interrupted education that are currently in our class uh, came uh, within the last, last two years. And then once they start to learn English better, do they fall into the FLEP category or, or just then the ELL? So they, they exit the status of student with interrupted education to SIF. They exit that as soon as they reach the transitioning status. Um, that um, usually takes about a year, year and a half, two years. Um, but then their English proficiency levels, um, they take time, as you know, to, to come to that commanding uh, the highest level of proficiency, which is almost a native-like proficiency uh, for them to become former language learners. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Wait, I, I just have a follow up to that. So, so if a student enters our school district and they they don't speak English, they go into SIF? Is that what you're saying? No, no. no. Okay. Students, so SIF is a student with interrupted or inconsistent uh, formal education. These are students who have uh, two, at least two levels or below, after uh, below their grade level. Oh, okay. So we will receive, let's say, students who are 
uh, should be in 11th grade, but they have not gone to school due to many circumstances, especially in Central America, um, and a lot of violence. Um, uh, they come here with interrupted education, especially post-pandemic with education where they had no computers available during the pandemic. Um, you know, schooling, that's, that's very different than here because their uh, uh, compulsory education is up to sixth grade. Uh, after that, many of them have to pay if there is education in their area. So that's why they become students uh, with interrupted education identified here. And there is a very um, clear and distinct process by the New York State, the how we identify the students for screen. Okay, and then once they move out of SIFE, they go into FEL? FLE? No, once they move, so once they move out, uh, where they are SIFE, but they're also entering level students, which is an entering level proficiency level. It's a, it's a lowest level when, when newcomers arrive to the United States. Then they move to the emerging level, and then they go to transitioning level. Um, those levels are um, uh, identified by New York State um, um, exam that's given every year, NYSESLAT. Uh, we will have it in a few weeks. Um, and that's how they move from levels to level, um, to, to next level. The, in total of five levels. The fifth level is the exit level. The, the what? The great? The, the, the last level. So there's the entering, emerging, transitioning, expanding, and commanding. Once they reach commanding, they are able to exit the program. They can also exit the program uh, if they are expanding and they score... Um, uh, if they pass the uh, ELA regions, they can also score, uh, exit out of the program that way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Now we have Ms. Raynor for the uh, budget adoption presentation. Ms. Raynor. Thank you. So I'm pleased to present tonight's fifth uh, budget presentation, which is the evening of our budget adoption, as Dr. Yanni said. Uh, today is a very high level overview. Uh, the information through the first four presentations is posted not only to uh, our website, but this presentation is on, will be on the website as well as on the agenda. So throughout our 24-25 budget, our mission has always been to support the students of Oyster Bay East Norwich by providing the high quality academic, athletic, and arts programs, as well as investing in facility enhancements, all while remaining fiscally responsible to our community. Our focus has remained the same of these four points I've talked through for each of our presentations, which including the last one, remaining fiscally responsible, I'm very proud to report this was also acknowledged this past fall when our external auditors came and presented to the board and our community, commending us with a clean audit of no new findings and recommendations. Tonight's presentation provides uh, an overview of the 2425 budget that is proposed for adoption this evening. However, throughout this budget process, it's also important to reflect on our many points of pride uh, although I won't read them all, they are here for you to view as you go through. Um, but as you heard through some of the presentations tonight with our uh, career, techno uh, career technical education program and our PO offerings, um, it's extremely important to remain that at our focus. Uh, as we've been discussing, the budget process this year uh, required very careful attention to balance this budget uh, because of several factors. Uh, primarily, we've had a sharp increase of expenditures due to CPI of 6.26% increased benefit costs, insurance costs, and allowable tax levy growth factor capping the amount of taxes we were able to propose. At the same time, there was a decrease in revenue proposed by the governor in January. Although Governor Hochul has stated last evening in a press release that they have the parameters of a conceptual agreement, there has been no final determination in the amount of foundation aid we will be receiving. Therefore, we cannot account for these changes in this proposed budget at this time. The numbers you see here on the left represent the revenue, the tax levy of the 58 million approximately, and the other revenue of approximately 7.4 does equal the balance, uh, the sorry, the balance budget of the expense of 65 million 603,880. Going into details of the revenue, as we've been discussing, the four categories on the left is what comprises from the revenue the district does receive. Breaking it into categories, our tax levy is 88.7%, which is why we try to remain very fiscally responsible with our tax cap, state aid of 4.4% as proposed currently, and other revenue of 6.9%. 
Although the rate of inflation, which we call the CPI, has been 6.26, over 2% for the third consecutive year, the comptroller has capped this tax levy growth factor at 2%. Uh, I bring this up again because it's an important key component of our property tax calcula calculation, which for the 24-25 school year is 2.41% for the Oyster Bay School District, which is what is being proposed within the allowable levy limit. To put numbers to that, we're looking at a tax levy within the cap of the 58 million. The other revenue is 7.4, which now equals that total budget of approximately 65 million. Looking into further depth of the numbers that align to the revenue budget, the first line you see the state aid as we've been discussing with that proposed aid as of right now. Um, again, can't account for any changes that's been uh, stated in the media. We are certainly waiting for, for, more, for more information from the state. Our reserves, as we've discussed, we've seen an increase in the employee retirement. So we are looking to appropriate additional money from our retirement reserve to mitigate those the financial impact of this increased cost. Um, due to our healthy financial condition that we've had, we've been able to appropriate a fund balance of $1.5 million as well. And that helps us with our year-to-year uh, -year budget fluctuations as we go through and any unanticipated costs that we may have. The tax levy you see just discussed on that prior slide has an increase from the prior year of approximately $1.3 million. In looking at the expense side of the budget, as we've been discussing, primarily salary benefits and contractual services. In further details, uh, here you see the breakdown of all the different categories, um, specifically salary and wages at the top, along with benefits, transportation very closely behind. Um, and as we've been discussing, our insurance costs have gone up significantly higher than the CPI of 6%. We've seen um, general liability insurance closer to 20% and health increases of 10%. And looking back at 10 years, we're still looking at a 5 to 6% increase. So those have maintained higher than the CPI increases. Components of the expense budget, which the district has more control of, has been the BOCES budget, equipment, supplies, facility budgets, which you can see from this slide has been reallocated to best support the needs of our students. This chart shows the percentages of each of those areas we just discussed. So in balancing the budget, you see from a year-to-year -year budget presentation, uh, budget role, we have a $64 million from the current year we're in right now to a proposed $65 million which is an increase of just over $1.1 million from the prior year. In addition to the budget propositions on the ballot this May, you will also find two additional propositions for projects. Year after year, the Capital Reserve allows the district to support long-term facilities and technology planning while strengthening our multi-year financial plan. Here you see a look back at the capital and technology reserves, seeing that we continue to fund and use the reserves to complete these projects while maintaining a healthy reserve balance. This year's proposed use of re reserves is con uh, consistent with our multi-year, which you see along the bottom of 440,000 in the capital and 415 in technology, which I'll go into further details. So with capital reserve projects, we're gonna continue renovations and improvements of our existing buildings. Um, this year, we're looking at new flooring in the high school, as well as ceiling and plaster renovations. At Vernon, the main central fan fresh air unit uh, is due for a replacement, as, long, as well as some gymnasium renovations. At Roosevelt, there's some exterior concrete sidewalk replacement and exterior lighting that needs to be um, renovated, as well as installation of some additional security locks, enhancing what we have. In looking at the multi-year technology plan, pop position three supports um, what we've discussed over the past few years of students at TR having a one-to-one -one iPad program. Students in third grade get a Chromebook, which takes them right through seventh grade. In eighth grade, they then get a new device to hold them to they graduate in 12th grade. Additionally, the multi-year technology plan allows interactive boards to be replaced on a rotating basis to ensure all classrooms are equipped with these interactive boards, as well as a multi-year replacement of staff devices. Here you see the three propositions that you will see on the ballot in May, consistent with prior years, where Proposition 1 will be the school district budget as presented. Proposition 2 is the technology capital reserve fund expenditure, for the technology projects I discussed. Proposition 3 is the capital projects that was discussed. Uh, as in each presentation, I just want to remind you again, all of these numbers are on that website, so please feel free to check. I know they may not be as easy to read on the screen here in the audience. As a source of information, this slide uh, chart looks at the historical look at the budget and levy increases that we've seen in the past 10 years or more, actually. Um, I am proud to report that although in the past few years you see that CPI has continued to remain above the 2%, we have been able to present a budget to the community that is still within the allowable tax levy cap. 
uh, always concluding with our timeline. The budget hearing will occur on May 7th at the next board meeting. The, May, the budget vote is on May 21st at the high school course room as in prior years. Uh, the district clerk's information is attached to this presentation you see here as well as on our district website. And this full timeline looking at the whole process and all my presentations uh, are also on the finance and operations page on our website in addition to this meeting. Thank you very much. So up next, while we're waiting for Alex to load this, is a quick look at some of the exciting projects that Dr. Yanni spoke about that he shared with the third graders. Some updated pictures to watch with the construction is going. I know many of the community has passed by, gotten to see it from the road or from the parking lots, um, but we want to make sure we're also just giving you a sneak peek of what the inside is going to look like as well. All right, here we go. Thank you, Alex. All right, so as Dr. Ghani said, we are so proud to be able to say that we are on schedule, under budget, and we're continuing to move forward with that. As we, you can see, we've moved all along from the left to the right side of this, and we're able to say that. So we're extremely proud that we've been able to say on schedule, under budget. So as we are coming up to the final year of this, uh, starting with some updates at the high school, uh, here over the April break, we had some additional final touches put in. You can see the sign for the innovation lab was put in. Um, the nano walls, which you see are fully open right now, you see them in this picture closed up, which again allows the most flexibility for the students at the high school to work collaboratively in large groups, break out to smaller groups, and allows the different settings uh, for the best possible learning options. This is the nano wall that went up in the second floor, and the collab space again allows it to open up to two, uh, the, open up the two spaces into one larger space or close off for two smaller groups to work, again, giving the most flexible learning spaces for our students. Out front to the main entrance, um, I had already presented prior on the new Oyster Bay High School lettering. Now we see we are proud to show that this is the home of the Bayman uh, over the gymnasium windows right there. Over to Vernon, here's the rendering of where it's going to look like. On the left side, you see the new music wing. Towards the right side center, you see the extension to the cafeteria. The floor plan on that allows for a new band space, a new orchestra space, and then a chorus general music room as well. Here are some of the outside pictures. Although the scaffolding is hard to see through, I can assure you the brick is going up right behind it. You can see kind of if you look through it that the brick matching the existing brick really did an amazing job to look like it's part of the original building. Here are some sneak peeks of the inside where you see all the ductwork, the electric, the plumbing, everything is moving right along, ready to connect the two buildings this summer. Each of the spaces are moving quite fast inside. At TR, this is the new extension. Uh, this is looking back towards the building with the football field and playground to your right, uh, stands to your right. This is looking back towards it. You see the playground there on your left. And again, here's a sneak peek at the inside that is moving right along. You can see all the steel laid on the ground. The roof is going on um, and the stairwell connecting the two buildings. Again, re all ready to be able to connect these two buildings come July when the students are out. Stairwell, there's uh, for not only is there a ramp from the existing building towards the outside, there is a stairwell to go up between the two floors. So that's the outside. You can see again the scaffolding is blocking it, but you see not only the concrete block walls going up, but the masonry is going up to match the existing brick buildings. So we are very, very proud to continue this work, like I said, on budget, on time to be able to connect those two buildings ready for our students come September. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions related to the budget presentation or the capital project? I would, I would like to thank Dr. Yanni and Ms. Raynor for all the work you've done to keep us on schedule and on budget. It's unbelievable. I also want to thank um, Mr. Nelson and Ms. Small. I know it's been difficult with your students in there and the construction going on, so thank you for no interruptions for our student and keeping the learning going on. Thank you both so much. I'll move on. <laughs> Back to the Board of Education meeting. Um, we'll now move on to the approval of our minutes. 
Um, a motion to approve the meeting minutes as listed on the attached uh, below. So do I have a motion? Okay. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. This is now an opportunity for the public to be heard on agenda items. We'll skip that. Okay, moving on. Well, there's nobody signed in. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to now to the approval of instructional personnel items resolved upon, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education of the Oyster Bay East Norwich Central School District hereby approves the instructional personnel items as listed in their entirety. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We'll now move on to 9.01, .01, approval of non-instructional personnel items. Resolved upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education of the Oyster Bay East Norwich Central School District hereby approves Hereby approves the non-instructional personal items as listed in their entirety. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any questions or comments? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We'll now move on to approval of business items. Resolved upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education of the Oyster Bay Norwich Central School District, hereby approves business items as listed in their entirety. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We'll now move on to the approval of special services resolutions resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board of education of the Oyster Bay East Norwich Central School District, Hereby approves the special services resolution as listed in their entirety. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We'll now move on to the approval of new business resolutions. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board of education of the Oyster Bay East Norwich Central School District, Hereby approves the new business resolutions as listed in their entirety. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Um, Next is the opportunity for the public to be heard on non-agenda items, but nobody has signed in. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Have a good night, everybody.